Well, hi, everyone. Pastor Steve here in our beautiful offices here in North Richland. Today is Wednesday, of course, and it's 2 o'clock p.m. or 1400 uh, military time if you're following along that way. This is Richland Lutheran Church Family Chat, and glad you're here with us. And Amanda should be joining me here shortly. Um, I think she was out at lunch and trying to navigate um, four kids' haircuts. So you know how that could have gone. <laughs> anyway, today I would like to reflect a little bit on the transparency of Christian leaders. You know, it's heavy on many of our hearts as Christian leaders to have read about uh, apologist Ravi Zacharias and his fall. He's of course deceased, but after his death, it came out that Ravi had been inappropriate in his relationship with women, uh, sometimes very uh, difficult and maybe even uh, abusive in his work relationships. And this all from a man in the church, a, a trusted spiritual and Christian leader. My question is, would transparency, vulnerability in him with the body of Christ have helped mitigate his desires to go into those places? So, hi, Amanda. I was just talking hi. about Rabbi, Rabbi Zacharias and his fall from grace and into abusive relationships and inappropriate relationships and was wondering really asking the question whether or not appropriate transparency as a christian leader and vulnerability with the body of christ would have helped mitigate some of those mm. some of those sins yeah here's the problem you know in seminary and Traditionally, pastors have been trained to not be transparent. That's so true. To not be vulnerable with the congregation, to stand apart. In fact, even the word ordination means to set, set apart for a particular work. But I question, especially if you, if, you know, as we see more Christian leaders falling into these kinds of uh, public sins and and disgraces, shameful situations. If transparency and vulnerability with the body of Christ really isn't the answer, or at least mm. the answer to this. So, yeah. how the haircuts go? Let's before I get uh, we move on. Because <laughs> you're trying to navigate four haircuts or something like that. Yep, know. yep. Got it. four haircuts done. So that's, the kids are looking a lot better now. I'm so grateful to, we see Diana Benjamin um, in the congregation for all of our hair stuff. And so it's, the kids were very excited to, I think it was their first one. It's easy to lose track and be like, oh yeah, we're not really going out in public a ton. And so, and when I do, I'm like, oh yeah, these kids are looking a little rough. <laughs> oh, Diana has cut my hair twice during the pandemic um, yeah last time i saw her was last month and it had been four almost five months <laughs> since my previous haircut <laughs> i maybe yeah. it's because people allow for it i don't know maybe it's yeah just afraid but she does a great yeah job. she does i'd like to read then a reflection on christian leadership uh mm. that's the subtitle of henry nowen's book in the name of Jesus. And he talks about the Christian leaders, the pastors in his context as a Catholic priest. I just forget he was Catholic. He was Catholic. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so he, he writes, how can priests or ministers feel really loved and cared for when they have to hide their own sins and failings from the people to whom they minister mm. and run off to a distant stranger to receive a little comfort and consolation. 
how can people truly care for their shepherds? And here's the important piece, maybe keep them faithful to their sacred task when they do not know them and so cannot deeply love them. He says, I am not all at all surprised that so many ministers and priests suffer immensely from deep emotional loneliness, mm. frequently feel a great need for affection and intimacy, and sometimes experience a deep-seated guilt and shame in front of their own people. Often they seem to say, what if my people knew how I really feel, what I think and daydream about, and where my mind wanders when I'm sitting by myself in my study? It is precisely the men and women who are dedicated to spiritual leadership who are easily subject to very raw carnality. Isn't that what we're talking about? Yeah. The reason for this is that they do not know how to live the truth of the incarnation. And the incarnation is Jesus stepping into flesh. Mm -hmm, they separate mm -hmm. themselves from their own concrete community try to deal with their needs by ignoring them or satisfying them in distant or anonymous places, and then experience an increasing split between their own most private inner world and the good news they announce. When spirituality becomes spiritualization, life in the body becomes carnality. When ministers and priests live their ministry mostly in their heads and relate to the gospel as a set of vulnerable or valuable ideas to be announced, the body quickly takes revenge by screaming loudly for affection and intimacy. Here's his conclusion. Mm -hmm. Christian leaders are called to live the incarnation, that is to live in the body, not only in their own bodies, but also in the corporate body of the community and discover there the presence of the Holy Spirit. I wonder, if Ravi Zacharias and other Christian leaders who have fallen so publicly would not have benefited by transparency and vulnerability. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's, you know, it's one that um, is not unique to only pastors. You know, I know there have been so many uh, other kind of large names in Christianity, especially that we've seen that happen. I think of John Christ, who was, yeah, is yeah. a comedian and um, fell into some similar patterns as well. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, I think as people, it's something all of us relate to on some level. I think there's a part of us um, that we all think Oh, if these people around me, my nearest and dearest, if they really knew what it was like in my head, they would have a completely different opinion of me. Mm -hmm. um, they would not think so highly. They would not be so gracious or accepting or really loving um, towards me. And I think yeah, it's... we really don't think highly of you anyway. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's not, I mean, you're okay. <laughs> We don't even like you that much, so. <laughs> so it's an easy one, yeah. <laughs> but isn't that what we're afraid of hearing? It is absolutely. That, those I was yeah, making those, a point. <laughs> those things aren't true. <laughs> those things that we, you know, think about ourselves in our worst moments are the things we would give anything to not have other people think of us. And so it's easy to play the role of a perfect leader or uh, whatever your role is, a perfect mom, a perfect, you know, husband, a perfect son. And we like that idea of perfection a lot more than we like the idea of the real, authentic, messy vulnerability. Right. And yet we find so much joy in being there for another, even yes. during burdens or in the hard times. I have the distinct, I think, uh, opportunity to be with people in their most painful, vulnerable, raw times. Yeah. And that really, Amanda, you know, is a gift. Mm -hmm. Why are we not giving this gift 
to the people to whom we minister. Mm. You know, Jeanette and I, have, especially Jeanette, has really been going through it of late. Um, yeah. Her mom is uh, at Callaway Gardens for the last six weeks, has been really in a difficult place with dementia and some other physical ailments. Um, we put her in a home, a, a place where she never wanted to be. Um, her mom's sister died last week of uh, similar things that that my mother-in-law is going through. Yeah, and it's just, it feels like it's just heaped on you. But do we keep those things to ourselves? No, we right. petition the body of Christ for prayer, and then the and then graciously receive the outpouring of love and care and concern. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, Jeanette and I both have gotten cards and emails and texts and phone calls. And that's such a gift to be able to receive from the body of Christ. This is incarnation yeah. ministry. Yes. And I think that the church at large is learning how to do authentic relationships um, more and more. Uh, you know, we've talked before about so often the church of the 90s and early 2000s was more the kind of performance and program driven and kind of big shiny excitement. And so that's how people learned to connect with one another, stay in the shallow places. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that's one of the things that I treasure about RLC, about the work that God has done and continues to do here is there is space for us to be authentic and vulnerable with one another. Um, you know, you set a, you help set a great tone with that, that you're willing to be honest about your shortcomings and your flaws. And it gives space for the rest of us to do the same. It's where when we're asked, how are you doing? We don't have to just say, oh, I'm fine. I'm good. I'm busy. Uh, we actually have space to respond and it's in those moments and that ministering to one another and even receiving from the con congregation especially um a word of encouragement or hope or prayer it's it's such a gift and it it just it changes who you are yeah you know some would say the deepest desire of the human person is to uh, find their calling or their work or what they're supposed to do. I would argue against that and say, no, I think the deepest desire of the human person is to be known. Yes, I agree. So, you know, this is really the space that we all operate within. Even society understands. I mean, you hear people saying things like, we see you. Yeah. We hear you. Um, we know you. Mm -hmm. Why are we saying those things? Because they fulfill a void in us when we're not seen and known. Yeah. And accepted. And the church, the body of Christ, is the place for that to happen. I also mm -hmm. think about the Jesus, you know, model for us. Mm -hmm. The Pharisees, the religious leaders in the time of Jesus, uh, very much were set apart, put on a pedestal. They liked yeah. it. Though. It was important for them. Jesus stepped down off his true pedestal and throne into space to uh, relate with humanity. Jesus is the model of incarnational. Yes. Mystery. He is the incarnation. And, you know, we see then Jesus frustrated with the disciples. He, he was okay saying, I'll paraphrase, what kind of crazy thinking is that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Peter, you're, you're not even thinking on the things of God. You're thinking of, of the things of Satan. Uh, he turned tables. I mean, mm. this, is, this is a Jesus that was transparent, vulnerable. I'm mad now. And I don't care who sees it. Yeah. This was a Jesus in the garden that wept only a stone's throw uh, away from the disciples who would have easily seen him. 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Went to them and said, pray for me. I, I'm yeah. grieved. I'm grieved in my spirit. I'm grieved to the point of sweat becoming blood. If Jesus could be vulnerable and transparent, if God was vulnerable and transparent, shouldn't we at least give it a whirl? <laughs> mm, yeah. yeah. When Heather Colburn has a great point too. She said, not just to be known, but to feel like we belong. Yeah, belonging. And yeah, that's a it because if we are so busy putting on a face or um, you know, not really letting people in to our lives or into what what we're really thinking or what we're really like, then we also don't get to experience true acceptance because they don't actually know us. They know the image we're trying to portray. And I think that that's such such a valid point that we want to belong. And be accepted. That's part of belonging. Mm -hmm. No, to be accepted and to belong. Mm -hmm. You know, our, our motto if you if we have a motto at RLC is doing life together. Yeah. And that means at every level and in every situation, with the good and the bad and the ugly. And you know, Lent is really one of those times mm. that we have the opportunity to be transparent, to be vulnerable uh, in an incarnational way with that yeah. is in the body of Christ. I've really been enjoying our Lenten services that are looking at lament Mm -hmm. individually and interestingly enough, corporately, where the whole body of of God comes together and says, we are in hurt, we are in pain, we we have been uh, wronged, we are uh, broken. That's an important part of our faith it is Mm -hmm. so again you know again circling back to the beginning i think it's of great importance that we not only as uh, christian leaders pastors ministers priests but also as members of the body remember Christian leaders are just one part of the body, right? Equitable part of the body. Um, uh, And so each one be vulnerable in that space with Mm. one another, go to the deep places. Uh, That's of vital importance. So for the purpose of not being caught up in our carnal bodies, that we would be held accountable, that people would really know where we struggle and that they we'd allow them to come alongside us as we receive their grace. Yeah, I love that. And I think that it's that vulnerability um, and that willingness to be honest with ourselves and with others that helps us to combat the shame Um, that comes from being caught up in something, um, sinful choices or whatever it is. And when instead we choose to against our instincts, say, no, I'm going to go to those deep places, knowing that it may be painful, knowing that it's also worth it. That's right. Yeah. And if you can't go to those deep places, then how are you expected to go to those deep places with others? And that's really That's really our opportunity in the body of Christ. Yeah. So uh, good chat. There's so much to say here. Um, We'll have to save some of this for next week or times to come. Yeah. So let's uh, shift our gears here a little bit and go to our announcements. Yes. Well, we have a lot on Wednesdays, and so, um, which is kind of fun. So we have uh, middle school at four, super kids at five thirty, holding down the fort, and then um, we have grief share uh, ministry. We could be holding in prayer at six thirty um, on Wednesdays via Zoom, and then at seven p.m. Um, we have our Lenten worship services. 
And those, like you were saying, Steve, have been a really, really great space um, to get to process some of this stuff together and uh, lament together and figure out what it looks like um, to go to some of those spaces that are different than Sunday mornings. Yeah, and, um, in, a, and in a different way also. Uh, you and Jenny Page have been putting together our guided meditations and they have been just stellar and a great opportunity to go to be encouraged and then invited into those deep spaces with God and with one another. Yeah. Yeah. And so we look forward to having you join us either in person or via our live stream for those. Yep. Um, and then of course it's not Friday yet. So you can still sign up to join us for in-person worship on Sunday. Um, those reservations are open until noon on Friday. And it's been such a joy to see people start to kind of come back into the sanctuary and worship together. And um, so we really encourage you that when you feel safe and ready, we look forward to having you return. And if you're not there yet, you're also welcome to join us via our live stream on our YouTube channel at 10, like always. Yep. So I, as far as we know, um, our in-person worship has not um, been the cause of any cases of COVID transmission. So mm -hmm. knock on wood, <laughs> uh, our, you know, we're being very safe and very cautious. And I, I'm yeah. there every week and feel very safe. And, um, and it, like you said, it's really a gift to be able to um, be there with each other. You know, not not our favorite thing to distance and wear masks and, you know, not hug everybody, but we do yes. it because it's the loving thing to do and it's the best we can get and it's better than nothing. So Yes, agreed. Yeah, we're good. yeah, yeah. And those are kind of the main things we have going on. Um, as always, Pastor Steve's devotions are still available. Um, those are happening every weekday morning and are such a gift. Um, it's a great series that we're in. And so we really encourage you to be tuning in um, to those if you're looking for some guided devotion time. It's been excellent. Yeah, they're usually eight to 10 minutes, sometimes 11 ish. <laughs> <laughs> You know, pastors just get going and you can't really stop them. <laughs> but the nice thing is, is you could push stop and then they're done. <laughs> That's true. They have the power. <laughs> yeah. Those have been a joy and in many ways have really um, helped to bring our congregation together <clears throat> all the more, even though we're apart. So yeah. I'm going to keep doing those and uh, I'm excited to do so. I just saw a little person run by my office. I wonder who that was. <laughs> yes, I think there are four little ones running around the church. Ah, right okay. Yeah. Would you know these little ones? <laughs> I might have a personal connection to them. <laughs> I think you do. <laughs> well, you better pray so that we can round up your kids. <laughs> I will do that. Okay. Dear God, we thank you for the way that you invite us um, into life that looks different, into not what the world offers, uh, where we have the plastic, we're all okay, it's all wonderful facade, but that you have modeled for us and invite us into vulnerability and authenticity and accountability. And so, God, we pray for the boldness and the courage to go to those places with one another, to be honest about our shortcomings, our struggles, that we may learn from one another, learn from you, and be healed, that we'll continue the healing process and the, the continued transformation of being formed more and more into your likeness, God. Thank you for being a God who cares so deeply about us that you do not leave us as we are, but continue to pour into us and invite us to more. It's such a gift right, to get to do life with you, Lord, and with one another. Mm -hmm. Be with us as we go from here. 
And it's through the name of your precious and holy son, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. Thanks, Amanda. Hey, friends, good to be with you. We miss you. We love you. And uh, we do really bless and thank God for the opportunity to do life together. Have a great week. Bye.